Hello everyone, and in this video, we are going to cover one of the many things you can do to speed up the dreaded Visual Studio compilation process for Unreal Engine. Since there are many ways to go about this, this video will be one of many videos covering different topics related to Visual Studio compilation time. To start off, we are going to specifically cover IWYU, which stands for Include What You Use, and it is essentially an efficient dependency model that your Unreal C++ project should follow. The purpose of the IWYU principle is to clean up redundant dependencies and making sure your C++ and header files only include the files that they rely on. Right now, I'm just going to open our Fortnite clone project in Visual Studio to better explain the points of IWYU. The first point being that the number of include statements in your header file should be kept at a minimum and for declaration should be used as much as possible. To help achieve this, always include the core minimal.h file first at the very top of your header files. Uh, what is core minimal.h? It's basically just a file with a bunch of include statements. And you'll see at the top here, core types.h, which is just another file with more include statements. Why am I showing you guys these files? Um, the only reason is because uh, core minimal.h, for instance, is typically included at the very top of most engine files and core types.h is typically included at the top of most core uh, engine files such as core minimal.h so by including the statement sorry by including this file at the very top of your header file you'll have access to the common variable types such as fstring effector tra t subclass of etc if you've been using unreal engine those variable names should have been very familiar to you. Then, of course, you may have an include statement for the class that your class is overwriting. So for example, my class is of type A character, so it's technically inheriting from the A character class. And I'm also um, overwriting actually some methods from the A character class, such as tick and post initialize components. And if you are overwriting members of your parent class, you'll definitely need an include statement for that parent class. And lastly, you'll have an include statement for your class's generated file. And now if you look at lines 11 through 20, notice how I'm using four declarations for all these classes instead of include statements. That's because we don't need include statements here. It's actually kind of extra, it's kind of redundant. We just need to declare the classes at the top of the file so that the header file knows that the class exists. This is the bare minimum for compilation really. And how do you do a for declaration? Just do class, the keyword class, followed by a space, and then the name of the class you want to declare. And I just want to make a note that for declarations are primarily used in header files only. In C++, in C++ files where all the logic lies, you would need the include statements for those same classes. I just want to quickly point out another reason as to why for declarations aren't typically used in C++ files and why they're used in header files. It's generally because header files are just what they are. They are filled with method and variable signatures. For example, if we take this line, line 29, this is a variable called camera boom and it's of type U spring arm component pointer meaning that we don't need to include the class for U spring arm component. We just need to declare its class at the top here because we're not working with anything within the uspring arm component like any of its member variables or its methods whereas if we go to the character class where i actually do include the file for the spring arm component class you'll notice like down here where i actually use the camera boom variable i'm calling methods from that uspring arm component class such as setup attachment and i'm also accessing member variables of that class as well, such as target arm length and be used pawn control rotation. In this case, I actually need the include statement. Whereas in the header file, since I'm just making a variable of type use spring arm component, all I need to know in this header file is that the type, the variable type exists. And just for that, a for declaration will suffice. The next point of IWYU is to make sure your C++ files include their matching header files first. So for example, in my Fortnite clone character.cpp file, the very first include statement is for Fortnite clone character.h. If I go to another C++ file, the projectile actor.cpp file, you'll notice the very same thing. The very first include statement is for its corresponding header file. 
Also, make sure you don't have any redundant include statements in your C++ files. I would recommend to test this just playing around and removing include statements that may seem unnecessary, even if you're not sure, and recompile your project. If errors related to unknown types or variables just not being able to be found start showing up, then just re-add those include statements because your C++ files may require those dependencies. Now, if you're missing include statements, then what I like to do is I like to go to Google and then I like to type in the name of the class. So for example, use spring arm component. And then I like to also type in Unreal Docs. And then in the search results, I like to look for the link that starts with api.unrealengine.com. And by clicking on this, it'll take you to a page like this. And if you scroll to the bottom, you'll see this references tab as well as a header variable that basically gives you a path to the header file that you need to include. And basically you have to do this for all your required dependencies in your C++ files. The third point of IWYU is that pre-compiled header files are no longer explicitly included. And you may be wondering what are pre-compiled header files? Basically they are header files with a bunch of include statements that get compiled into an intermediate PCH form. Pre-compiled header files have include statements for large libraries that don't change very often. Now these PCH files are then quicker to compile when including the PCH header files instead of the regular header files that you normally do in your C++ files. However, producing the initial intermediate PCH file takes a while, hence why you don't want to have include statements for files that change frequently. Because anything that um, your PCH header file depends on whenever it changes that whole PCH file has to be regenerated. Now this can be very advantageous obviously it can of course like I said speed up compile times and if you make your own PCH header file you can actually define it and use it in your Unreal Engine project by going to your project's build.cs file and then setting a variable called PCH private header file equal and then in double quotes you would put in the path to your PCH header file. However, the third point of IWYU is that pre-compiled header files are no longer explicitly included. So what this means is that you would no longer do this. You would no longer make your own PCH header file and add it to your project to be used. Instead, you would actually rely on the engine's shared and generated PCH files. So. What the engine does is it'll generate um, PCH files for your project's modules. And since it's preferred to use the engine's shared PCH files, avoid setting this private PCH header file and instead set the PCH usage variable here to PCH usage mode that use explicit or shared PCHS. The fourth and final point of the IWYU principle is to avoid including monolithic header files. Monolithic is just a fancy way of saying very, very big. So for example, what you'll typically see in a lot, lot of projects is you'll see include statements for engine.h or unreal ed.h. Now, if you need access to classes such as gengine or uengine, don't include engine or unreal ed.h. Instead, add an include statement for engine slash engine.h like I have here highlighted on line 14. Now, a general tip to help you abide by the IWYU principle is to go to your project's build.cs file and set a variable called b enforce IWYU equal to true. What this will do is the compiler will now emit warnings if you don't include the matching header files first in your C++ files. The last tip I want to share is that the Unreal Build tool uses what is called Unity Mode when building your project. This involves combining C++ files into one big C++ file to speed up compilation. However, this may mask missing include dependencies. Therefore, even if you forget an include statement somewhere, your project may compile fine. To ensure that your project abides with the first two points of IWYU covered in this video, and that your C++ and header files include their required dependencies, turn off Unity building and disable PCH files by going to your project's target.cs file and set p use unity build equal false and set b use pch files equal to false as well. And then just copy those two lines 
and go to your editor.target.cs file as well, paste them in there as well. And then just right click your project and select build. Now, just a fair warning, this will make compiling a lot slower and should only be, be done very infrequently to check your dependencies. If you use a class that the compiler does not recognize, then you need to fix that by including a missing header file somewhere in your project. Otherwise, your project should now be aligned with the include what you use principle. Then I would actually suggest going back to your target files once you're done building without Unity mode and PCH files and removing these two lines from both the target and the editor target files because building in Unity mode is actually a lot faster for larger projects, even smaller projects as well. And we still need to use the engine generate PCH files to speed up compile times too. And that is pretty much it. If you liked the video, then please like and subscribe, join our Discord, support us on Patreon, and have a good day.